Okay, thank you very much again. Thank you for inviting me at this important meeting, not to give me this kind of topic and to be against my friend Jean. But you know, at the end, I hope that uh, we'll be from to the same part. Okay, let's start with the disclosure. These are all my disclosures. And let's start to talk about uh, the combination treatment. So, usually when I talk about uh, the management of uh, hospital infection in serious patients, this is my first slide. And these are, in my personal opinion, the, fa the five main concepts in antibiotic therapy. And as you can see in these uh, five main uh, uh, concepts, there are at least two that are related to the topic of today. Because I believe that in difficult to treat patients, it's important the combination, the dose optimization, the drug penetration of the antibiotic that we decide to use, the de-escalation and the duration. So two points are in favor of the combination. But let's start with the theoretical reason and theoretical basis for the combination therapy. Why the clinician use combination treatment or why uh, these are the theoretical basis. So the first point is to provide broader coverage that include non susceptible strains. The second point is to prevent emergence uh, of reduced susceptibility. The third point is to achieve bacterial synergy, to provide activity against stationary phase organisms and organisms protected by biofilms. This happens especially for uh, some type of combination, especially the one with the rifampin, to better penetrate cells and tissue and to inhibit toxin production. So all of these points, in my opinion, are clearly demonstrated in the liter literature. Probably the only one that uh, has not been demonstrated is the prevent of the emergence of resistance. But probably on this point, uh, Jean talked uh, about this, that is one of the most important cons to the combination. So the reason for the combination, in my opinion, is to expand the coverage. So this is the, the primary aim. So the drug A and the drug B must enlarge the spectrum of activity. If we have A and B like this one, this is a, a combination, and we have an advantage in using the combination, but remember that if we combine two drugs with the same spectrum of activity as, for instance, the double uh, beta-lactam, we don't have the same kind of effect. So another important point is the synergy and the antagonism, because two drugs together can give one plus one can have three, or one plus one can have also zero. This is very important because be careful when you combine the drug to combine drugs that are synergistic together and not to have drugs that can be antagonist together. This is a very important point. So this is one of the examples. So this is a paper published three years ago by Miche that studied a lot of this topic, the, the combination. And as you can see, this is the combination of a, a backbone, a beta-lactam, plus a quinolone or plus an amino glycosid. And as you can see, is the percentage of inappropriate treatment. And when you combine the treatment with an, an amino glycosid or with a fluoroquinolone, you have a lower proportion of patients with an inappropriate treatment. Look, when you combine cefepin or a carbapenem or piptazo plus cipro or plus an amino glycosid, you gain in the susceptibility around 10%. You, you can see with Piptezo alone, we have 80% of susceptibility. This is of obviously against gram negatives. And when you combine with an amino glycosid, you have a gain of around 10%. So, but there are also some negative aspects of the combination treatment. The first of all, the possible antagonism. The second one is the possible super infection resistant. That is probably another issue that uh, must be considered. Adverse events, obviously, if you combine two drugs, you have the adverse event of the first plus the second and also the cost. But this is probably a problem most of the past than uh, today because most of the drugs now are generic and the cost is not anymore a problem, at least for the antibacterials. 
So let's see some example of advantages in using the combination treatment. This is the Surviving Sepsis Campaign 2013, and when we look at the recommendation, there is empiric combination therapy should not be administered for more than three, five days, but there is an, uh, an encouraging in using a combination treatment. There are data supporting the combination treatment. The first point that, in my opinion, must be considered that our therapy must be appropriate in order to reduce the mortality. There are a lot of uh, papers supporting the adequate, that the adequate, the appropriate antimicrobial th therapy is better than the inappropriate in terms of mortality. So, in my opinion, what we have to look when we consider the combination is the adequacy. Look, for instance, the pa this paper. This paper published in 2008. So the conclusion of the authors were that uh, combination is, doesn't give any advantage in terms of mortality. You can see here the mortality. But look at the point of the adequacy. When you have the combination therapy, you have adequacy of the therapy in around 85% of the cases. When you have the monotherapy, the adequacy is only 18% of the cases. So when you use a combination treatment, probably you have more chance to be adequate comparing to the monotherapy. We have data supporting the combination in terms also of mortality. There is one study, the Kumar one, that is a retrospective analysis of a lot of patients, and they analyzed the early combo versus the early monotherapy, and they demonstrate in a very big um, number of patients a lot of, the, a lot of respiratory infections that using the early combination, there was an advantage in terms of mortality. And as you can see here in a couple of miles, there was an advantage using the combination compared to the monotherapy. Uh, in, the, in, 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 in the same uh, volume of critical care medicine, there was a meta-analytic and meta-regression study made by the same author, and they study when combination uh, is to be used. And they demonstrate that the combination is good when you have the patient in shock, or critically ill and is not good when the patient is not in shock and not critically ill. So the message from this study was a retrospective study, was a meta-analysis, is if you have the patient in septic shock, probably it's better if you start with a combination therapy than to start with a monotherapy. Then there is another interesting study published in critical care a couple of, year, uh, a couple of years ago, and this is a, Sp a Spanish multinational multicenter study when they analyzed all patients admitted to the ICU and they analyzed the treatment in the first six hours of diagnosis of septic shock and, and uh, severe sepsis. And look, this is another important point. So they demonstrate that combination of antibiotics with different mechanisms of action is an advantage in terms of mortality. Look, we have a more, these are the survivors, and these are not, not survivors. And as you can see, the patient that survived, that, that don't survive at higher Apache to score and higher lactate. So, at least from this study that is just an experience, they support the use of drugs with different mechanisms of action, like a backbone, a beta-lactam, plus an aminoglycoside, plus a, a fluoroquinolone, or plus a, a cholestin with uh, drugs with different mechanisms of action. What about other type of infection? What about community acquired pneumonia? Is there any advantage in using the combination compared uh, to the monotherapy? There are a lot of papers support the combination. This is the last one published in Thorax last year. Uh, by uh, This is a group of uh, more than 5,000 patients hospitalized in England and in the world. And they demonstrate that there is an advantage in using the combination when we have patient, sick patient. Look, there is no advantage when you use the combination of beta-lactam plus macrolide in low severity, like the carb 65 or 1, and there is an advantage when, there, when we have the carb 65 at least 2. You can see the difference in mortality. This is a, the multivariate analysis associated with the antibiotic. So let's move to another important point, target therapy. Is there any uh, data support the combination therapy? in target therapy. Let's start with the first bugs, that is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So here, I remember 
This is a very old meta-analysis made by Safdar. They analyze a lot of studies. At the end, they demonstrated that in Pseudomonas aeruginosa infection, there was an advantage in using the combination treatment. However, other experience later on don't, didn't support the same, uh, the same results as Safdar. But I think that regarding Pseudomonas, one of the best studies, this one, made by Garnacho Montero, and they uh, analyze the optimal management therapy for Pseudomonas, and they analyze mono versus combo. And the variable associated with the favorable outcome is the adequacy of the treatment. As I said uh, in my second slide, the adequacy is the most important one. But Use of combination reduce the likelihood of inappropriate therapy, and therefore prescription of empirical combination with at least two anti-pseudomonal antibiotic in patients with VAP at risk for pseudomonas may be optimal management. But you have to start this kind of therapy, but however, monotherapy alone with only one active drug is e uh, determined equally active uh, outcome the, uh, as a combination one. Therefore, you don't have to prolong the use of two drugs active against pseudomonas. This is the concept of the, of the step down or the de-escalation. So you start with the two active drugs and then you de-escalate when you have the bug that is susceptible to one of the drug use. What about Asinetobacter baumani? Asinetobacter baumani is another uh, bug f for at least in my country, we use the combination treatment. And which is the most used combination? Cholistin plus rifampin. Why cholistin plus rifampin? Because they use with the two-step mechanism, cholistin disrupt the, the, the bacterial membrane and the rifampin inhibit the DNA-dependent RNA polymerase ribosomal subunit. There are some reports in vitro about the utility of the combination cholistin plus rifampin. Is there any data in the literature supporting the combination? We decided to do this study as an Italian study supported by the Italian Agency of Drug, and we published this paper in August 2013. So we analyzed in an open study cholistin plus rifampin versus cholistin alone, and we demonstrate that no difference in terms of mortality between the combination of cholistin uh, plus rifampin versus cholistin alone. However, as an infectious disease specialist, I continue to use the combination because the eradication rate for the combo was much higher than the, than the one obtained with the monotherapy with the cholistin. So I support the combo uh, in Asinetobacter bovine infection. And what about Klebsiella? The, the new phenomenon of KPC, I, I, I know that the situation in France is a little bit different by the situation in Italy and in Greece, but now in Italy more than 50% of our Klebsiella pneumonia are KPC producer. So, which is the best treatment for KPC? Again, the best treatment is represented probably by the combination. These are one of the first reports from Greece by Dicos, and he demonstrated that two active drugs are better than the one drug. And again, we publish, uh, myself and Mario Tumbarello, this study in 2013, we analyzed more than 125 cases of KPC bacteremia, and we demonstrate that the, mono, that, the, that the combination therapy was better than the monotherapy. Obviously, this is a retrospective analysis with a lot of bias about the, the choice of the therapy, but when you have a KPC infection, please go for the combination. And the best combination, at least in this, in, in this Italian experience, was the combination of high-dose tigacycline plus I dose cholistin plus I dose meropenem. This was protective for mortality, as you can see in this uh, multivariate analysis. So when to use the combination? So at the end, I believe that HAP, VAP, and patient in septic shock probably can have a combination therapy, at least at the beginning. So I mean an early treatment with the combo. Then for sure, severe CAP, we have data supporting the use of beta-lactam plus macrolide. But in these cases, the use of macrolide is different by the second agent because macrolide 
has some non-antibiotic effects, some immunomodulatory effect, but this must be discussed uh, eventually uh, at the end of the presentation. So probably also in patient at risk for multidrug resistance strain and for sure in fashion at risk for pseudomonas, very high risk for pseudomonas. In target therapy, probably at the beginning is good in pseudomonas, but then we must do a step-down therapy to a monotherapy. In acetobacter baumani, there is a role for colistin plus ifempin and eclipsella pneumonia, at least from the Italian experience, there is a role for this kind of combination, tigacycline plus colistin, plus idose meropen. So, but the, the most important message, in my opinion, is that if you decide to start with a combination therapy, you must de-escalate. So this is a, 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 an editorial published uh, December last year, did with uh, Arthur Piver and Masterton, and the, the message is that if you decide to start a combination therapy, you cannot continue for the whole duration. Uh, with the combination treatment, at, uh, unless you have a KPC or acinetobacter. So if you decide to start with a combo, you have to uh, do the de-escalation to the monotherapy. This was my opinion on the combination. So due to the greater mortality associated with delays, inappropriate and effective antimicrobial treatment, initiating broad spectrum, empirical antimicrobial treatment is prudent. Uh, which often means, obviously, a combination. For patients at risk for multidrug resistant gram negatives infection, treatment should include coverage of pathogens that may, that may be resistant to previously administered antibiotics, and empiric combination may be appropriate. The antimicrobial regimen should be promptly narrowed or discontinued based on the patient clinical course and the culture and the susceptibility profile results. So if you want to have my presentation, you can upload to this side, and I would like to thank you for your attention.